What's up YouTube? It's Coach Corey. Today we're doing a fun video. We're going to rank the best attacks in Brawl Stars. So let's get into it. Alright, so we're going to rank all of the attacks for all of the Brawlers from best to worst. And of course in this we're not including supers, we're not including star powers. Some star powers make attacks better like Brock's, like Crow's. Maybe even Jesse's, so we're not including anything star power wise, not including anything super wise, just their normal attack. So that includes, you know, their damage, reload speed, range, things like that. Okay, so let's get into it starting at the bottom. Now, at number 21, what I have is the worst attack in the game. Definitely some personal opinion going into this is a bow. Bows, I hate bows attack, honestly. It's just so inconsistent. It's damage is not that much. Um, he has a good amount of health, which makes him able to survive a lot of situations and obviously his star power is useful and his mines are useful, but his attack, it's really, really inconsistent. If you ever like really want to get damage, uh, it's gonna be hard. And if you're facing someone who knows how to dodge Bo's attacks well, like they're good at dodging, yeah, it's going to be really difficult to get that damage. So I really, really don't like Bo's attack. It's going to be at the bottom for me. And at 20, the second worst attack in the game, it's going to be El Primo. El Primo's attack, I also just don't like. He throws five punches. It takes him a good amount of time to throw those punches. And of course, my biggest problem, well, I don't know if it's my biggest problem, but the biggest reason it's not very good is the range. The range is, of course, the shortest in the game. Now, he is a tank with tied for the most health, so it makes a little bit of sense that his range is really short, but it's just so short, it makes it kind of easy to dodge, kind of easy to get away from. So, I just really, really don't like El Primo's attack. And at 19, I have Pam. Pam's attack, don't get me wrong, it's not that bad, but I really just don't think it's that great. I mean, a lot of times, you know, Pam is going to be your, if you're, Mostly playing her in jam grab, first of all. And in jam grab, you're gonna wanna stay away from people. And her attack is best at close range where you're gonna be able to hit as many shots as possible because of course, it fires in a premeditated pattern back and forth. And if you're firing at long range, you're not gonna deal much damage, but you wanna be at long range most of the time. All right, now at 18, you might be surprised about this. It's gonna be Tara. Now Tara actually, I think her attack is not that bad, but the main reason I have it so low is her reload speed is really, really slow. And to be honest, the main reason Tara is good at all is because of her super. Her super is easily one of the best supers in the game by far, and not counting that, her attack, I mean, it does okay damage at max. It does a little bit over 1600 damage which isn't a lot of damage, and you have to hit all three cards to do that. But to me, just the somewhat low damage and the really, really, really slow reload speed just hurts Tara as her overall damage. And at 17, and honestly, you could probably argue this probably should be a little bit lower, and I would understand, it's gonna be Frank. Frank's attack is, you know, he waits, not waits, he takes him a second and a half, two seconds to swing his hammer, and it does decent damage, 1600, and it can hit multiple people, it's an area attack, but it's not a really long range, it's a little bit similar to Nita's. But of course the main drawback with Frank's attack is, is it takes so long to swing, it makes him really easy to hit. I mean the main reason Frank is good at all is because of his super, and because it only takes him 3 hits to charge up his super, so he can get his super really easily, and it's very 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 strong. And that's really the main reason Frank is any good at all. If we're being honest here, if Frank didn't have that super, he would be garbage. All right, now at number 16, we're still talking about attacks I really just don't like. It's gonna be Penny. Penny's attack, I mean, it has some positives for sure. If you hit something, you can have coins fire out behind it that can actually deal pretty good damage. It's not the largest radius. It's not gonna be that likely to happen that often. It's very useful in Showdown, that's definitely for sure. But, I mean, her attack is just such a small projectile. It's hard to hit that often very accurately. It's one of the hardest shots, in my opinion, to aim in the whole game just because of how small it is. It's gonna be hard to consistently hit shots with Penny. 
So that's a big, big reason why Penny is this low. All right, and next, I guess we got uh, Penny's cousin. We got Jesse. Now, actually, I do like Jesse's attack a good amount more, but it's still not amazing, in my opinion. I mean, I think we're getting into the point where all these attacks after this, I do actually like them. All the ones below this, I really don't like. This one, I think, is actually not that bad because, I mean, it can chain off other people, so it's definitely easier to hit, and it has a much a much wider projectile than Penny's. It does almost the same damage, a little bit lower. Now, Jesse does suffer from a low reload speed as well, and it is not the hardest to dodge at Jesse's side. It is kind of slow. All right, now at 14, we have Poco. Poco's attack is actually a lot better than it used to be. It has that additional range that it didn't have before, and it travels a little bit faster too. Now, Poco does have a slow reload, and his attack doesn't deal that much damage but has a decent range and it has a very, very wide radius. So it's not that hard to hit multiple people. So Poker's attack, pretty good, not that bad, not always gonna deal that much damage and it doesn't have the fastest reload, but it can hit multiple people and overall it's pretty good. All right, let's do these next two at once. At 13, we have Daryl. At 12, we have Bull. I feel like tank attacks are a little bit hard to rank because of course it relies on them getting in close range. But I mean overall these are pretty good attacks. Once you do get within range they're gonna deal a lot of damage. Just a question of whether you can get within range of course. So that does make it maybe a little bit hard to rank but I think this is about where they should be. I don't think they're that bad. Uh, and they, I mean they have the attributes to be able to use it well. So uh, I think this is pretty good. All right, at 11, we have Shelly. Shelly's attack is actually pretty good. I mean, it got an additional range buff recently, and now she can do, well, she can do better chip damage than before. Overall, I do like Shelly's normal attack. I don't really love it. I think it's pretty good, though, and anytime you're at medium range, you're gonna be able to deal pretty decent damage with Shelly. The reload speed isn't too slow as well, so that's definitely a big bonus with Shelly. So you can do a lot of damage overall, especially if you're at close range. And yeah, I like Shelly's attack for the most part. All right, at 10, I honestly could have ranked this one higher. I'm still not sure about this, but at 10, I have Nita, okay? Nita's attack I actually really like. And to be honest, Nita's attack is one of the main reasons she's good. It's mostly because of her attack. I mean, her bear is decent, but it can go down pretty quickly. Her attack though, it has a really, really fast reload speed. You can go around walls pretty easily with it, which works great with Nita. You do the same amount of damage no matter what range you're at as long as you're hitting them. You do have to do a lot of hits overall to get that kill usually, so it's not necessarily easy, and of course the range isn't very long. That is definitely the biggest weakness with her attack is of course going to be the range, but it does have an insanely fast reload speed. So because of that, I definitely like Nita's attack. All right, now number nine. Honestly, this one was kind of hard to rank, but at nine we have Mortis. Okay, so Mortis's attack is he dashes forward and he does a little over a thousand damage. So this one was hard to rank because you got to factor in his dash. Now maybe this could be a lot higher. You could, I could see you argue for Mortis's attack to be a lot higher and it would make sense because really if he didn't have his attack, what would Mortis be, right? But the reason I'm not ranking it very, very high is it doesn't deal much damage and it has a really, really low reload speed. All right, at number eight, we have Crow. Crow's attack fires out three daggers. They poison the enemy for four seconds, does damage over time, and they cannot heal up during that damage. Of course, you can't heal while you're taking damage. Crow's attack, all right, look, it's, it's a really, really good utility attack. Anytime you can stop an enemy from healing is really clutch. And if you can do it over an extended period of time, and keep doing that throughout the match, the amount of pressure you generate, and you can easily get control of the map because of stuff like that, because you can heal up while they can't, and that is a very big advantage. It doesn't deal the most damage, and that is probably the biggest caveat with Crow's attack, but it does have a fast reload speed, and you can hit multiple people, not too hard. 
Okay, now at number seven, we got the other legendary. We got Spike. I do really like Spike's attack. He throws out, well, a spike, and it goes out in five or six directions. Each one does a little over 700 damage at max. So you can end up dealing, if you hit a target, either a little over 1,400 or over 2,000 damage. Depending on how lucky you get, there is a bit of luck with his spikes. And the main thing with Spike is he has the ability to deal really good damage. And you can fire them off pretty quickly. Spike is a really good tank counter because of this, because he can deal a ton of damage. And its projectile is actually pretty big, so it's not too hard to hit with as well. And the move speed of it as well isn't that bad. So I do really like Spike's attack. All right, at number six, we have Barley. Barley's attack Okay, I really like Barley's attack, and I think it's useful in a lot of different ways. Some people might question me ranking Barley this high, but hear me out, okay? Barley's attack, it doesn't deal the most damage, right? Well, it can. If they stand in it for two ticks, it will deal a little bit under 2,000 damage, which is pretty good. Now, it's not the most easy to hit every single attack with Barley, but... Barley is a really, really good utility brawler. He's able to control an area of the map very, very well. And if, additionally, additionally, okay, his attack goes over walls. This is a very, very big advantage for any brawler to have, being able to throw over walls. Unless you have someone else who can also attack over walls, they can't counter him. So that's a very big reason Barley's attack, in my opinion, is so good. It's easily one of the main reasons Barley is any good at all is because he can throw over walls and because of the wide radius of Barley's attack. Okay, adding on to this, at number five, we've got the other thrower, okay? It's gonna be Dynamite. I think both throwers just have such a strong advantage in one, area control, and two, being able to attack over walls. That's such an insane advantage over any brawler. It's literally uncounterable unless they can also go over walls. Now, there are some supers that can do that, and that can definitely be a counter. As far as attacks, this makes their attack easily one of the best in the game, in my opinion. And now, the difference between Dynamite and Barley is just Dynamite a little bit less area control and a little bit, not a little bit, and a good amount more damage, in my opinion. So I do like Dynamite a little bit more than Barley. I could see it either way. I think both of these throwers really do deserve their ranking, though. All right, and at four, we have Colt. Colt's attack is he fires six bullets in a straight line wherever he's aiming. They fire pretty quickly, and they each deal a little over 400 damage. So Colt's attack has the potential to deal a lot of damage. And to be honest, Colt's super isn't that great, and his star power isn't that great either. Colt's attack is the best part of Colt for sure. So I don't think you can underrate Colt. Colt's ability to deal damage is easily one of the best in the game. He's not super strong right now overall, but his attack is definitely the best part of Colt. And I do like the ability that Colt has to deal a lot of damage. All right, now at number three, we have his counterpart. We got Ricochet. Ricochet's attack is he fires five bullets and they can bounce off walls. Okay, that is gonna be one of the main reasons Ricochet is at number three, is that he can bounce bullets off walls. This gives him a little bit of a similar attribute to throwers. He can't go over walls, but he can go around walls, which can be really, really key. And you combine that with his very long range and Ricochet can win matchups just because he can hit them and they can't hit him. And he can be behind a wall doing that, potentially. So Ricochet, he can deal a lot of damage, first of all. I mean, his attacks do a good amount of damage and you can hit a couple of them at the same time. So he has the ability to deal good damage and he has the utility of being able to shoot around walls. It makes him a very strong brawler. Of course, his weakness is his health but he does have a fast reload speed as well. So his, just talking about his attack, his attack is very, very good. All right, now number two, I have the second best attack in the game. It's gonna be Brock. Okay, Brock's attack, I really like. Now in Max, it does a little over 1500 damage per shot. He has an okay reload speed, but he has the longest range in the game. And that is very, very key. Additionally, if you're at close range with Brock, uh, I'm 
I hate to say this, but it's really good with auto aim. So if you have a tank or someone coming on you, you can quickly fire those three shots at close range and deal uh, 4,500 damage pretty easily. And that's a lot of damage in a really short amount of time and not many brawlers can do that. You combine that, his ability to be decent at close range with someone who has the longest range in the game, you can see where this is a potentially really strong attack. His projectile is pretty big, so it's not the hardest to hit with. It's not a very fast projectile. It's a decent speed. You do have to do a little bit of prediction, but Brock can be really, really good in situations where it's like a long corridor, like in Stormy Plains. There's a lot of long corridors with Brock and he can just take full advantage of his range and they don't have anywhere really well to escape and they can't hit him because he's just out of their range because he just has that long range and there's nowhere else for them to go. I really, really like Brock's attack. I think it's easily one of the best in the game in my opinion, but I think there's one who has a better attack than Brock and if you haven't figured it out, it's gonna be Piper. Okay, right, I mean, Piper deserves this, in my opinion. Piper's attack can do almost 2,300 damage with one shot, and you can quickly fire off that second shot as well. Piper does have a long range, and she also has a fast speed to her projectile, so it can be really hard to dodge if you're accurate with her shot. If you're accurate with her shot, they're not gonna be able to dodge it. It's just a matter of being accurate with her shot. Now, Piper, though, she can deal a lot of damage, and in my opinion, she is the queen of getting kills, okay? She can easily win one-on-one -on -one matchups like no other. She can quickly one-two shot you if you're not paying attention, if you're not careful, Piper will take you down. Now, of course, the biggest drawback with Piper is her really, really slow reload speed. So, when you're playing Piper, you have to be conservative and make sure you're saving your shots so you can deal those finishing blows. You can't just always be firing shots, you'll never get a kill. But if you know how to play Piper, she can be really good, actually, and especially about getting kills. As far as her attack is concerned, in my opinion, that makes her the strongest attack in the game because, let's be honest, her super kind of sucks. And her star power, it's okay. It's not always useful, though. It definitely helps her, but it's mainly her attack that makes her good, and that makes her, one, it makes her the queen of bounties. She is by far probably the best in bounty, except maybe with Brock. But her attack is very, very strong. It's really good at winning those one-on-one -on -one matchups, and that's what makes Piper, I guess, the queen of the attacks in Brawl Stars. All right, guys, well, that's my ranking list. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. What ones do you agree with? What ones do you disagree with? I'd love to hear your opinions. And all right, everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will catch you later.